Hi everyone, my name is Milan and I have a spicy topic prepared for you today. We're going to be talking about the unit of work pattern. A lot of people have asked me in the comments how I implement the unit of work pattern and I finally decided to make a video about this. We are going to talk about what the unit of work pattern is, how we can implement it with NLE Framework Core and what are the benefits of using the unit of work in the first place. So if you've been following along with my videos over the past few months, you may have noticed that I was using the unit of work inside of my command handlers to persist the changes to the database. If you are new to this channel and have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I suggest that you first watch the video where I introduced the CQRS pattern, which is going to pop up on the screen now and then come back to this video because then it is going to make a lot more sense. As you can see, the unit of work implementation is very simple, but we're going to be adding a lot of things to this class, so make sure you stick around for the rest of the video. All that we are doing is we're just injecting the DB context from NED framework, and we are using that DB context inside of the save changes method to persist the changes to the database. So why am I implementing a wrapper a round of the DB context, which only calls the save changes method. I have a few reasons why I am doing this, so let me explain. First, I'm only using the unit of work on the right side of my application, and I'm also using the clean architecture. I don't want to pollute my application layer with any the framework or external concerns, which is why I'm using the iUnit of work interface in the application layer. When I inject this interface in my command handlers, I'm going to receive an instance of the unit of work class, and I can safely call the save changes method to persist the changes to the database without exposing any implementation details. There's two benefits to this. One is, since I'm using the repository pattern along with unit of work, the repositories are not going to contain a save changes method to persist any of the changes made to the repositories to the database, which forces me to call the unit of work save changes at the end of my business transaction. So this removes the responsibility for persisting the changes to the database from the repositories and moves it to the unit of work, which now has that one sole responsibility. Another benefit is since I'm using the iUnit of work interface, I can easily provide a mock for that interface while I write my unit tests. And if you missed it, I released a video about unit testing command handlers where I show exactly this. It's going to pop up on the screen now. So make sure you take a look at this video to see how easy it is to write tests for repositories and unit of work when you're using interfaces instead of NED framework, for example. So that was just a few things off the top of my head. If you're also a fan of the unit of work pattern like I am, Make sure that you smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel to show me that you care. Now what I want to do is introduce a little bit more behavior in the unit of work class. We have a few entity framework interceptors in place. One is used for converting domain events into outbox messages and the other is for auditing. I also made videos about this topic so you may want to check them out. What I want to do is move the logic from these interceptors into our unit of work. So I'm going to start from the domain events to outbox messages interceptor, and I'm going to copy this entire implementation and move it to the unit of work. I'm going to create a separate method that is going to contain this logic. So it's going to be a private void method, and I'm going to call it convert domain events to outbox messages. And let's paste in the code that I just copied from the interceptor. We need to fix it up a little to make it work. Luckily, the changes are relatively simple. We just specify the DB context variable that we have. So now we move the logic for converting domain events to outbox messages. And we need to call it inside of the save changes method so that it actually executes. I'm going to also move the logic from the other interceptor that we have for the auditable entities. So here is the implementation. I'm going to copy that and create another method where I'm going to paste the implementation. So this one is going to be a private void update auditable entities. 
and let's paste in the implementation. It's a simple fix to make it work and we need to include a few namespaces so that everything compiles. So this is the logic for updating the auditable entities and setting the created on and modified on properties. We are also going to call this from our save changes method right after we convert the domain events to outbox messages. So now instead of processing all of this logic in the interceptors, we are applying that logic inside of the unit of work save changes method. We also need to make sure that our interceptors are no longer running because we move the logic inside of the unit of work. So I'm going to go to program.cs and in the part of the code where I'm registering the interceptors, I'm going to get rid of them. Let's also get rid of this and I'm going to leave the configuration like this. I'm going to set a breakpoint at the start of the save changes method and let's see how this is actually behaving now. The part of the code that is going to be calling the save changes method on the unit of work is going to be the update member command handler. So I'm also going to add a breakpoint there so that we can see step by step how this actually works. And I'm going to start the application and head over to Postman where we're going to send a put request to our API. So we're inside of Postman and I prepared a put request for updating the first and last name of the member. I'm going to set the value for the name to be Milan's new name and let's send this put request and see what's going on inside of our application. So we hit the breakpoint inside of the update member command handler and we fetch our member from the repository. You can see that it's not null. So we're going to skip over this check. We now create the first name and last name value object and we call the member change name method to update the member's name. Let's step into that method and see what we have inside. You can see that we first do a check if the first and last names are not equal. And if the new name is different, we raise a member name change domain event and we set the property values and return from this method. We call the member repository update method and we finally get to our unit of work. And we're going to step inside of this call to see what's going on in our unit of work class. So we hit the breakpoint that we previously set in the unit of work. And we're now going to execute the two new methods that we just added to the save changes method. The first one converts the domain events to outbox messages. If you remember, we just raised one domain event, which was the member name change domain event. When I execute this code, we end up with one outbox message. And if I take a look at this object, you can see that the type here is member name change domain event. So we have successfully converted our domain event into an outbox message and now we add it to the appropriate DB set. So this is also going to be persisted to the database in the same transaction as the update to our member entity. And this is the point of using the unit of work pattern. We can make as many changes to our entities as required and the unit of work handles persisting those changes to the database all at once. So it acts as a transaction boundary around our business logic. If I continue, we are going to enter into the update auditable entities method. We are first going to fetch the entity entries that implement the auditable entity interface. And if there are any, we are going to go over them in a for each loop and check the entity state. If the entity state is added, we set the created on property to the current date and time. And if the entity state is modified, which you can see it is because we just updated our member, then we are going to set the modified on property on our member. And we're going to go over this loop, get out of this method, and we go back to our save changes method. And here we are actually calling the database context save changes, which is responsible for taking all of the changes that occurred inside of this transaction and persisting them to the database. This is just going to return a task, so nothing is going to happen, but I'm going to await this task here, and this is going to apply the updates to the database. I'm going to show you the output console now, so that we take a look at the SQL that NAD framework just sent to our database. 
So here we can see the console output for our application. Here is the update statement to the members table, which is going to update the member that we just modified. It's going to set the first name and the last name with the updated values and also the modified ARM properties. You can see that Tenuity Framework is also sending the email and the created ARM property. This is just how Entity Framework works. And this is actually specific to the SQL Server Entity Framework provider. If you were using the PostgreSQL Entity Framework provider, it's smart enough to figure out which properties were changed and it's going to only send those properties in the update statement, which is also one of the reasons why I prefer using Postgres over SQL Server. If we take a look down here, we can see that we have a second SQL statement. This one is the insert statement into the Outbox messages table. This is going to persist the Outbox message that we just created a few moments ago. So now we have successfully handled our command and we can return a success result. So I showed you in this video how I use the unit of work pattern, why I like it and what I see as the benefits of using the unit of work pattern. I'm very curious to hear what you think about the unit of work pattern. So make sure that you leave a comment under this video and I'll make sure that I reply. Also, I prepared these two videos that you can see on the screen for you to watch. And until next time, stay awesome.